Rob Eshman, the editor of the Jewish Journal, wrote about it. And he concluded that there it is, that's the formula. That's the formula to success in the Jewish community. It has to be excellent, it has to be relevant, and it has to be free. Exactly right. Put those three things together and you got Jews. <laughs> Great idea. So he suggests we take that birthright model and expand it. Camp right. Send a Jewish kid to camp. Free week of summer camp. Date right. Free year on a Jewish matchmaking service. <laughs> school right. Free year of Jewish education in a day school for Jewish kids. And of course, near and dear to my heart, pray right. Free year of temple membership for people. Great idea. Great idea. It's one problem. The Bromf even the Bronfmans and the Steinharts run out of money at some point. So who's going to pay? If it's a great idea, who's going to pay? Let's face it. Great counselors, great camp educators, great camp directors, they need to pay their bills. Teachers, principals, specialists in schools, they have mortgages. They need to get paid. Clergy, we're human as well. Clergy. Right. <laughs> And you can bet that the more talented and brilliant and motivational these people are, the more in demand they'll be, and the more in demand, well, we know what supply and demand does to gas prices, so imagine what it does to talented Jewish professionals. So, inspired by Rob Eshman, and recognizing that, as I said, at least 85% of the Jewish community believes that there needs to be a Jewish future for our people, believes in the next generation maintaining their ties to Judaism, I have a suggestion. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Create your own birthright, pray right, school right, date right, or camp right. Now, my logic may not have worked on that couple who left the temple, but I do believe it makes sense. Because as I said, we are at the front line as synagogues making Jews, one soul at a time. Membership dues are not about fees for service. They're investments in a Jewish future. That's what they are. Temples ensure, and all Jewish institutions together ensure, that you will have, no matter how old you are, that you will have Jewish children, Jewish grandchildren, and Jewish great-grandchildren, and so on. Without our institutions, there would be no future for the Jewish people. So. Pray right. Be a Bronfman wannabe. Pay someone's membership dues to a temple. You have children, they're struggling, pay their dues. You have grandchildren, they're old enough to raise a family, give them a membership to a temple. No one in your family needs it. Become a patron and sponsor at this temple if you're a member so that we can help someone else become members of this temple. Like I said, temples can't do it alone, though. Become your own mini birthright benefactor. Take your family to Israel. Send your teenage children or grandchildren if you're a grandparent. They don't need the new iPod or the new computer. They may think they do. Send them to Israel instead. Camp right. Send your grandkids to a Jewish summer camp. Water skiing camp at Camp Swan Lake or fill in the in the blanks, is fun, but it doesn't do a thing for the Jewish future. It's great for water skiing, great for tennis, great for volleyball, great for whatever it is they're doing, but it's not about guaranteeing the Jewish future. I know Jewish camp works because I'm a product of a Jewish camp. Rabbi Hirsch is a product of a Jewish camp. Rabbi Wozniak is a product of a Jewish camp. Rabbi Kritschever, who's been to a Jewish camp? This time I would like you to raise your hands. All right, they work. Jewish camps work. So instead of giving your grandkids that new gadget they want, tell them you'll send them to camp. Better yet, if they need a bribe, give them the gadget and camp. <laughs> so fill in the blank. I haven't covered everything. Become your own blank right. Whatever it is, what can you do? 
yourself to secure the Jewish future. Not the Steinharts, not the Bronfmans. They've done a lot. What about us? Every single one of us can do something to secure the Jewish future. That's what's amazing. Now, I'm using dollar signs and money. But it's not, all, it's not all about money. It's not all about dollar signs. It's not all about facts and figures. Because what really creates a commitment to a Jewish life is Jewish living. The more Jewish experiences that the younger generation has, the more secure our own collective future will be. If you choose dinner and movies over Shabbat on a Friday night with family, believe it or not, you're making the Jewish future less secure. If you skip out on building a sukkah or lighting Hanukkah candles, you're making the Jewish future less secure. If you breathe through the Pesach Seder just to get to the end or just to get to the matzah, without trying to make it something that is memorable and engaging, you're making the Jewish future less secure. So what I'm trying to say is that it's up to us. And I don't mean us, me. I don't mean us, the Steinharts. I don't mean us, the professionals. I mean every single family, every single adult has the capacity in some way to build a more secure Jewish future. Each of us. And here's what I'm sure about. No matter what it costs, it's absolutely priceless. Absolutely. So now that gets us back to the, the Ahafta on page 18. And the words I asked you to read. That prayer is said twice a day by Jews. Morning and evening service. Twice a day. And in those words, we say, teach them to your children. Thousand, just think about it for a minute. Thousands of years of Jews saying, teach them to your children. Thousands of years of Jews saying, I am committed to the Jewish future. Thousands of years of Jews saying, I have to do something that makes a difference to the next generation. And it's because of that that we're here. It's because of that commitment that I can stand here and talk to you. There is no doubt in my mind that if each of us works to secure the Jewish future, we will have one. We'll have one that is wonderful and glorious and filled with meaning and purpose. And who knows what great things we can continue to achieve as a people. Ken Yehi Ratzon. So may it be.